pain is a message sent by the body to the brain, signaling that disease, injury, or strenuous activity has caused trouble in some area. Not all pain, though, seems to serve a useful function. In some cases, pain lasts long after an injured area has healed. In other cases, pain may be caused by recurring disorders or when acute pain has not been managed appropriately. According to the American Pain Foundation, more than 30 million Americans suffer from chronic pain. Chronic pain is defined as pain that lasts for more than six months, usually, and will be intermittent or it can be something that's persistent at least 12 hours in a 24-hour period. Some things that have, I've had to deal with with chronic pain is mainly in my lower, lower to mid-back. They make it to where I have a hard time standing up, sitting down, even taking a few steps it has made it very difficult just to try to lead a normal life. I had chronic pain for several years before coming here. I've done construction for 30 years and the pain just from working for so many years. I, to the point where my personal life suffered, I couldn't play ball with my kids or pick my daughter up because the pain was so bad. And when I came here, I heard, I heard about this study and came here and they uh, prescribed a great medication that kept me pain free for a year. There are a variety of treatments that can help manage pain depending on the severity. Some do so on a purely physical level, others approach pain control on a psychological level by affecting the mind's perception of pain. We generally think of treating chronic pain with interventional treatment or non-interventional treatment. If it's interventional treatment, it could be a procedure or even surgery. If it's non-interventional treatment, it's either pharmacologic, which could be a combination of medications or a single medication, or it could be alternative therapies or psychotherapy. For those suffering from moderate to severe chronic pain, opioid medications can provide a short, intermediate, or long-acting relief depending on the specific properties of the medication and whether it is formulated as an extended release drug. Opioids, which some people refer to as narcotics, are very effective in treating pain by blocking the transmission of information from the stimulus to the brain. They're classified as either rapid onset, short-acting, or long-acting, and some of the long-acting are really short-acting, but in, they've been formulated to give a continuous release of the short-acting. Although opioids such as morphine or codeine are strong analgesics, they do not provide complete relief regardless of whether the pain is acute or chronic in origin. When opioids are used for prolonged periods, drug tolerance, chemical dependency, and occasionally addiction may occur in patients on long-term opioid therapy. Though addiction is rare as a result of opioid prescriptions, they are abused by some individuals, which can cause concern to healthcare providers. We're experiencing a prescription drug abuse epidemic in America. One of the reasons for this is that individuals are seeking a high from the drugs. Fortunately, uh, the pharmaceutical industry is working on new products that can prevent individuals from experiencing a high if they use the drugs in an inappropriate way. Abuse deterrent formulations, or ADFs, have emerged as a means for supporting opioid access while limiting abuse and its consequences. Several different types of ADFs have been developed. Each of these types has the potential to reduce specific forms of prescription opioid abuse by either physical barriers or agents designed to be pharmacological abuse resistant agents. There are two approaches, one which is considered an abuse deterrent, and that's when there is a second chemical embedded within the first chemical, or the opioid, so that if it's altered in some way, it'll prevent individuals from feeling good or getting the high. The second is considered an abuse-resistant formulation, where there's a physical or mechanical barrier that prevents people from altering it so that you can't crush it, you can't snort it, and you can't inject it. Research is ongoing to help address opioid abuse while keeping in mind the need for effective treatments for patients with chronic pain. ALO01 is a new drug currently in clinical trials that if approved by the FDA might be the first opioid medicine to incorporate an abuse deterrent feature while effectively treating patients with chronic pain. We found in the clinical trials that these new opioid formulations have been just as effective in controlling pain as the previous opioid formulations. What we're hoping is that once they're marketed, we're going to find that they're less likely to be abused than all of the previous opioid formulations.
When I came to the clinical trials, I wasn't sure what to expect, and they uh, made me feel real comfortable and made me feel good about the drug I was on. And I, they warned me about side effects that I had no problems with. Everything worked great. I was able to work, to drive, to operate machinery at work, and it worked out really good for me and, and gave me a good quality of life for about a year. A lot of the results that I've been getting from the pain medication have mostly been po positive. They help me to face a day whereas on other times it just doesn't feel like you can face a day. And so it helps to take the edge off of the extreme pain. There's always going to be some pain you're going to live with, but it helps to cope. I was told that there was other chemicals in the drug. As long as I took it as prescribed, I would have no side effects and no, no high feeling or anything else with it. It worked great as a pain reliever, and if I was to take it in an, an abusive way, it wouldn't work the way it was supposed to work as relieving pain. Abuse deterrent formulations have the potential to reduce the public health burden of prescription opioid abuse, but they will require not only technically successful formulations, but also appropriate scientific assessment and rational expectations of their benefits. For more information, visit alpharma.com.